I'm going to give a brief intro to both Baron and Smith, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Baron Scherer is a time-based media artist with a background in moving image archival practices. He works in Miami, focusing on altering and repurposing archived films and videos in cinematic, paracinematic, and gallery installation contexts. Scherer's formal experimentation, exploration, and artistic process in social media and digital platforms create source material and documentation of his temporary and exper experiential installations. Smith Durgeen is a self-taught multidisciplinary artist based out of South Florida who produces work that reflects walks of life from the entire Tri-County South Floridian region. Over his 20-year career as a photographer, his primary motivation has been to focus on more creating has been to focus more on creating visuals that appeal to him as opposed to focusing on the technicalities of making them. As such, he has taken on a non-traditionalist approach to capturing his subjects as he views struggle, pain, and bad days to be just as important as capturing joy and happiness. Thank you both for joining me. Um, and so during this conversation, we have a video that'll just be looping in the background, which shows snippets from Baron's project, as well as some behind the scenes of Smith shooting his project. Um, so that'll just keep replaying, and if you guys have any questions about something specific, we can reference that. Um, but first, I want to start with you both just talking a little bit about each of your projects in your own words. So, Baron, if you could kind of kick us off and talk about what your project is, yeah. when you applied, to what it is now. I want to do a clarity. I think that's a good idea yeah. to read your three words. Can we give you three words? Oh, there you go. I ended up submitting my three words for three years in a row. Perseverance. Yeah, I was, you know, something that wasn't going to happen unless I got funding from the LAs. So, Slug Fund Capital is an informative, disjunctive, disjunctive, paradoxical mediation on Miami using the self reflexive form of an essay film. So, that was a really basic. Uh, I said, I'm going to make an essay film. I said, I'm going to make an essay film. And um, it, by showing the Examples of my work, I think maybe that they would realize it, it, there might be a little more to it with the, the installation context and things like that. So, when I was doing my, um, when I was applying, um, I, I actually emphasized installation shots of moving image work rather than moving, moving images like we're seeing here. Because, I mean, this context, it's a, it's a, a two channel work, you know, I'm, I'm showing single screens of raw footage, you know, so the end result's not really going to look like that. but. So I guess the most context that you could provide for your, for your show, uh, the better. But um, essentially what I'm doing with this project is I'm mashing up um, archival images, and that comes out of my, my background of being an archivist, with contemporary images that I kind of shoot on the same formats. So my, my entire project shot on 16 millimeter. And uh, it's been a challenge because it started in 2020. Um, lab lab costs for processing and buying the film stock has doubled in some cases. Um, so yeah, films uh, yeah, have triple yeah. the price now. <laughs> right. So that was a challenge. Um, and what I was what I've been doing, it started in 2020 and I'm just finishing a portion of it today and then the uh, lock the picture in June and then later on, you know, try to find uh, like a gallery or installation context for it. Um, but yeah, just keep keep plugging away. So while we're speaking for we gotta take questions from the audience. Yeah, at totally. The end, if you guys have questions during the conversation, feel free. It's very artist okay. to artist. There's everyone here is an artist, so. And then Smith, do you want to share a little bit about your most recently awarded LA project? Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so my project titled "Here Today, Gone Tomorrow." Um, it's something that started back, I want to say, 2018, 2019, and. Um, it was honestly something that was started unintentionally. I didn't think that it was gonna form into what it is now. Um, it was just literally just me going into neighborhoods that I grew up in, other places in the Tri-County areas, and just shoot, documenting things that I found appealing to me. And eventually, you know, over time, as I started to capture these images, I started to realize how a lot of these places, a lot of the people there just started to vanish away. Um, and I started to just inquire more within that, you know, started to figure out things like climate gentrification, gentrification just in general. 
And then slowly but surely, um, it formed into this project, which is here today, gone tomorrow. And um, a friend of mine, which is here today, is actually somebody that was like, hey, you should submit this to the Eddies. And I did, and this is. Here you are, <laughs> here today. <laughs> um, well, I find it really interesting, too, that you both arrived at your projects in kind of unintentional ways. So Baron, I think your projects really stemmed out of your background as an archivist. And Smith, you're a self-taught artist working in a analog media. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you arrived at shooting film and why medium format and what that was like in its initiation? Um, so I've been been shooting, doing photography since uh, like 15, 16 years old. Actually, I have one of my good friends here, Pop. Uh, we both started since a kid. And we just shoot, you know what I mean? That's just something we just love to do. Um, I didn't get into medium format until I would say 2018, 2019, probably when the project came about. Um, and it was something for me where I just wanted to slow down my whole process in photography. I wanted to kind of like, start over, figure things out again. Um, I felt like before, like when I was shooting digital, it was just really quick, 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 quick. I wasn't really shooting with intention. Um, and once I slowly transferred over to medium format, everything just slowed down for me. I started shooting with intention or looking for um, the purpose of why I'm shooting, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I mean, and also like medium format is just such a, beautiful, beautiful tool to use, like, just, you know, that texture, the feel, the color, all that, it's, not, it's something that just can't be replicated, you know what I mean, and I just fell in love with that. And Baron, what about you? How did you even get into archival work? You know what, my whole thing is, I went to film school a long time ago, but took a detour, I was doing a little bit of production work after college, you know, on commercials, things like that, but I ended up uh, learning how to uh, do preservation work on nitrate film. So I, um, I've been a film handler, like a film projectionist on the Alliance Cinema right across from, used to be a, a little art house across the, where Books and Books is now, it was a movie yeah. theater with crazy people running it. That was one of them. Anyway, so I've always handled film. Um, you know, when I was in school, I learned to shoot on 16. We didn't do video, things like that. So it's just, you know, um, I, it's just something that I've always done. And you were speaking about like intentionality and things like that and slowing things down. That's, um, it, you gotta, um, you gotta take care with, with everything you do. And I knew that, that with a certain amount of budget for my project, if I shot it on 16 millimeter, um, I would basically get all my shots. And it, and it really, you gotta focus, like Smith was saying. Um, so I go out and I've shot maybe 30 rolls of 16 millimeter for this project. And uh, each roll is about three minutes. Each shot's five to ten minutes, right? And I have to nail every single shot because I cannot waste a single frame of film, you know. So essentially, my, my the things that you're seeing here that I actually shot, um, they look maybe more like still photography, and that's because I was locking the shots down. I was shooting during the pandemic, you know, so uh, I had the freedom of kind of being alone and visiting these places where maybe I shouldn't have been. Um, but I could I could lock down the lock down the shots, get my exposure, and just nail it, you know. Um, so that's what I see in the shots that you chose to show today. That there's an emphasis on on there's a, a continuity between what you're doing and what I'm doing in these shots. Um, but in the end, you know, with the archival stuff and like appropriating sound and, and music and things like that, it's it's, it's different. But this is, this is really nice. I like what you do with this. <laughs> They're just seeing this for the first time. So <laughs> they get to explore it with you. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the context of the process of the grant. So Smith, you just won, right? You just got funding in December or January, whatever it is. But I know you've been working on this project for years. And Baron, I remember when you first got this grant, it was, I wouldn't say a slow start, but I think there was a lot in the process, because I know you're also sourcing other archives and digging through a lot of footage. So when we talked about earlier, you know, the Ellie's application and timelines and how that process works, like this is the best example of what that looks like, right? Smith came with 
images of a project he had already shot and wanted funding for the freedom to experiment and to find and realize its final form while continuing to make the work. And Baron came with this idea and you know, had some sort of semblance of a practice that resembled what SunFund Capital is, but also spent a lot of time applying to other grants as well. And so can you, Baron, talk a little bit about how this project has changed, oh, yeah. altered, and all the different collaborators and partnerships you've developed throughout? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't know how much I was going to get. And you don't, I never, it never says anywhere how much you're going to get when you do your project. Um, so when I found out what that was, I, I thought, well, you know, there's a, a sort of a season of grants, like local grants that you can do. And, and Amanda mentioned it earlier, but you, you can leverage an LE's win to, during the season of grants, you know, things that need matching grants and whatnot. Um, so it took a long time. Uh, for me to kind of get the budget where I wanted. And, and in the end, this work, uh, two channel, I wanted it to be uh, two film prints, two half hour film prints, that's an hour of film uh, with uh, mono soundtracks. There was no way from 2020 till now that I was gonna get all that together. So I had to make decisions. Um, you know, like I negotiated uh, my labor for use of archival images, you know. Um, what I did with this project, and one of the reasons it took so long from working with the archive downtown at Miami Dade, and they were closed for a year, you know, for pandemic. And then when we came back, it was like half staff and things like that. But for the archival portion of this project, and I don't think you see too much in here, but basically what I was doing was uh, aiding the archive by I did research of previously unrestored um, movie images. Like I wanted to look at things that nobody's looked at since they they ran on television in the 50s or the 60s. And so um, I would physically um, restore them and then prep them for, for transfer. And so I have this cache of hours and hours of footage that um, hasn't been seen since its original context, whatever mm -hmm. that was. Uh, so I'm really excited about that, but I what's gonna say about that. Um, collaborators, when I found out that I wasn't gonna make film prints, then I thought about, um, bringing collaborators into the project. So uh, I started out by, I commissioned uh, four sets of artists to do the soundtrack for the movie. And because I kind of work in appropriation, I said, well, we would do all this up front. And so we, I commissioned music from four artists and with, with wanting to sample and reuse the, the finished works. You know, they're not, they're not looking at an image and scoring by sight, they're making work, which I didn't appropriate. Um, so we made an album. Do we have the album here? There, I have one. It comes out today, the album. Um, it's in the, in yeah, this we'll bring it out and pass it around. This is the show and tell version of this thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so I was so happy. And that's how the, the, pro the pro project kind of evolved, you know. I knew I was able to, uh, to commission the works. Uh, Budget adjustments. I'm like, well, I'm not making a film print. Why don't we make a record? You know, in tribute to the artists that, that did this for me. Yeah. Were those later decisions? Yeah. Post, yeah. post application. I mean, I had I had 300 yeah. words. You know, and I kind of know. Pass this around. Yeah, pass yeah. around. This is the record. So that came out today for a record store day. We're really excited. It's like an artist edition of. So it's part of your presentation for the application was abstract. It, I said I'm, I'm, I'm doing an S like a, a, a an essay a, an essay film, which in, in an envelope form it covered whatever you finally did. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that that's that's pretty loose. It's that's essayistic. Wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, like if you look at like if you know those traditions, uh, Chris Marker and people that that you you basically uh, illustrate text, and this is something I'm, I'm getting to. Um, I commissioned text for this project from a, a urban geographer named Stephanie Wakefield. And so Stephanie gave me 2,000 words for these aphorisms or these little chunks of text which uh, correlate with what I've been shooting and what I've been researching, okay? And I hired a narrator. Like a, there's a woman, she got really big and during the course of this project as a voice, voice artist 
in Hollywood. Like I heard her on the radio this morning. I know she does the Oscars. She does everything, which is amazing that she would want to work with this project. But I showed her the text that Stephanie. I, I felt emboldened through this whole process. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I had Stephanie's beautiful text. It's, we might have to publish that. Um, but I showed the Andy, and she's like, "I'm in." And she did it. You know. So is, was this relative to your body of work, or was this a total different direction? No, it's all it's all in the ballpark. It's just it, it it's on a bigger Spending, level, yeah. like collaborators yeah. and things like that. I mean, usually I work on I work in all the film bench or I, I desktop editing, you know. And this project during COVID kind of started out where I was doing my internet research and writing my ideas and things like that about where I wanted to shoot when I finally started going out into the world, you know, making notes about where I want to loop back and, uh, and cover footage in Miami for the project. Uh, but it, no, it totally evolved all, 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 all the way through. Yeah, Baron and I had a lot of yeah. calls. <laughs> a <laughs> lot of calls. Like I, like I leveraged this for, for other funding down the, down the road, you know. Yes. Um, and, you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, 300 words, like everybody should do it every single year. You hit it, and then if you have a practice, it, it, it all kind of makes sense what I wrote based on, like I said, I, I did installation shots rather than maybe video clips, you know, because you don't get the whole thing with, with a video. It's, 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 a, it's an experience. So anyway. Um, Smith, I have a question for you. So I want to talk about how geography comes into play with the decision making behind your project because you talked about being interested in the whole tri-state South Florida region. Um, and then also you mentioned that you're shooting an analog and it was a decision for you to slow down. But because now you're using this archival media, do you have intention or ideas about the future of your work becoming an archive that's accessible, that's been documenting communities that are disappearing? I know that's a lot, but we'll take it one at a time. <laughs> I think I'll start with the last one. Um, I just actually had a conversation the other day as far as releasing this work to the public more. Um, I don't know why I keep things so personal and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely do want to share more with the world and whatnot. And um, can you hold on? Can you repeat that last question one more time? Um, thinking about how your project, because it's documenting these communities that are disappearing, might become like a publicly accessible archive. And then the other question was how geography comes into play with you making like decisions on where you're documenting. Okay. Um, yeah. So no, for sure. Um, Honestly, I would love for my work just to be out there for people just to have to look back, just to see like, wow, like um, free market, for example, like it's not there anymore, but I'm pretty sure there's people that would love to see what it used to look like, the type of, um, the type of character that used to be out there, you know? Um, as far as like, where I choose to go and document the places that I go. Honestly, it's so random, it's super random. Um, I grew up in South Florida, so I have a good idea of um, you know, what's around, what's not around, what's slowly changing and whatnot. Um, so again, that process is just completely random. Yeah, how often are you going back um, to singular places to shoot the body of work, or have you at least with this particular project? Um, I wouldn't say every day. <laughs> I, I shoot every day. Uh, if I'm not shooting every day, I'm like working on the images that I've shot, you know, or processing them and whatnot. Um, this is something, I mean, like, or the question that you asked Baron earlier as far as like even with the grant money, when I first applied to this project, I didn't even know there was any money into it. You know, I was just applying, thinking of support and whatnot. So for me, it was just like, I just want to do this just to like spread the message out there, just to get the people to know what's going on in the community and whatnot. Um, so seeing as though you're now at the stage where you've received you know, a portion of the funds and you're making decisions on like what this project might be, do you have an idea of what you're leaning towards as far as how to present your project? Yeah. Um, you know, that's definitely been a process within itself now. Um, when I first got the grant, um, I didn't really, I mean, eventually I knew I wanted to create a whole exhibit. You know, I'm super picky on things like that. 
as far as spaces, how the work is shown and whatnot. So that's definitely been an ongoing process. Um, surprisingly, I have not spent any of the money yet. Um, I'm just literally um, still just funding myself. And once I really do figure out exactly like where I'm gonna exhibit, how much I'm gonna print and things like that, that's when I know I'm just gonna throw all that money into that. Um, and Baron, since your project is semi-released as of today, can you talk a little bit about what the other elements will be and how they might be released for this project? Yeah, well I mean, it's a, it's a two-channel installation, digital, digital video. Um, I'm, I, it's actually, I'm, I'm making it modular, and I was talking about um, sort of the essay form, which maybe like Chris Marker or, or you know, Guy Debord who made crazy films where he would just read text and show images in the 70s. Anyway, so I'm making it, uh, it's a little modular in that it has two soundtracks and it has two sets of images. There's like, I think I counted there's maybe four ways to install it. It's kind of like the, it's finished with the curators, mm -hmm. like you can do channel A, channel B, channel A sound, or you know, B A. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways. I have so much stuff um, in terms of text and, and images that it's it's a, like a modular uh, two channel two channel work with single channel audio. And do you know when that might happen? Well, locking <laughs> picture, you know, like June, <laughs> and then I'm, I'm not trying to, to describe this and book a, an installation. Right. It's yeah. not really something I've been thinking about right now. Yeah. When I lock the picture and then I show somebody, then, then that, that next step of presentation will be something that I have to do. But in terms of me saying I'm done with it, it's when I lock the picture. And then you're relaxed. <laughs> For a little bit. <laughs> three years. It's, no, it's been good. I mean, Ulai has been very generous with, with the pandemic happening and, and just the challenges, you know, and, and it took, I didn't really get rolling, I have to say, until maybe mid-2021, mm -hmm. you know, where I could actually start visiting the archive again. Uh, you know, I did mostly solo shooting, but there were times when we did the, uh, we recorded a, a quartet uh, to do one of the tracks for the record, and like I had a whole crew. Like, I don't know if you see them in here on this, but, um, you know, so I was working with like a group of people, uh, like a, a film crew. Um, but yeah, I'll be glad to be done with it. <laughs> um, and then one last question for you, Baron. So we know that Smith hasn't spent funds yet because he's still figuring out what the final form of this project might take. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit about what the funding has been spent on? I know you mentioned yeah. a bunch of collaborators. And yeah, um, it's been spent on artists, like four sets of musicians, um, the voiceover talent, uh, 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 an author, uh, buying the film and processing the film and scanning the film is probably the biggest single expense of the whole thing, you know, where uh, you buy fresh film stock, you send it to the lab, and then you have scans to work for it from. So this thing will be presented digitally, but um, I mean, you know, the, the, the biggest single expense was just the materials. That's the film. Right. Um, I, I negotiated with the archive uh, for this use of the, the, the tens of thousands of dollars worth of archival images to deposit everything that I create there, you know, for, for, for somebody else's use down, down, the, down the way. Um, that's been a thing that's been going on several projects the last three or four years where I'll create something and then I deposit it for some, some other use, some other how, later on after I do my thing. When you say deposit, you mean the actual film? Yeah, the negatives, yeah. So. I mean, my, my project will be digital. I'll always, my family, my state, whatever, we'll always have access to all the stuff that I shot, but so will everybody else. You know, because like as an archivist, my whole career has been because somebody else deposited film here, right? So with this project, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that as well. Um, and then your project was also a finalist for Creative Capital, right? It wasn't a finalist. That, that's what really got me rolling when I hit it the third yeah. time with Ulay. I was like really excited. Uh, I just added that on my 300 words. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the same roughly for three years, but that third year, I, I don't know if that made a difference or not, you know, because you, you do have different jurors every year. But I said, uh, this is a round two of Creative Capital. Which is still a big deal. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, be good to get it. 
That's great. Um, but no, like if you have a season, if you have a season of grants, and then you start, you keep fine tuning what you're going to do. You know, it, it helps. It helps. Like half of what I do is probably writing, just to, to get the resources together to work with collaborators and make work. Leverage. Yes. Um, and then Smith, so we're looking at some behind the scenes of you shooting. So who are you working with on this project? Do you usually go out shooting alone, or are you also collaborating with other artists in the community? Um, so for the most part, I shoot alone. Um, since uh, the Ellie's, I've been documenting uh, what I've been doing. So I've just been reaching out to like my friends. Um, you know, actually, I take that back. I don't really, sometimes I just go out and just shoot with my friends. You know what I mean? We're just going out into different areas and just documenting what's going around. Um, but yeah, since the Ellie's, I have, you know, reached out to a few of my friends, like, hey, help me document what's going on. As you can see um, with this video that's playing, um, I have a long time of film development lab that I deal with backers. Um, those are the guys that help process my film. Um, I sometimes process my own film when I have the time to do it. Um.